Good afternoon to you. Well, coming up today, we will have the latest on what National Cabinet discussed today. The PM announcing some elective surgeries, including IVF, will resume after Anzac Day. Meantime, Victoria recorded seven new cases of coronavirus overnight, as Virgin Australia emerged as the biggest corporate casualty of this crisis so far, today officially going into voluntary administration. Charles Croucher has the details. Even before the share market was open this morning, Virgin Australia, as we know it, was closed. The company going into voluntary administration, placing great doubt on the future of some 16,000 workers. There is good news in the short term. The company and their liquidators and administrators say there is no intention for any redundancies as yet. The federal government says they've allocated $15 million through the JobKeeper allowance that will go to those workers. But long term, the path forward is not as clear. Both federal government and company stakeholders say this won't be a collapsed airline. There are at least 10 groups circling and looking to buy or at least buy in to Virgin Australia moving forward. But what the airline looks like after that process is unknown. The organisers, the company directors have said they want a leaner, stronger and fitter airline that is likely to mean fewer routes and therefore fewer jobs. Here is the company CEO Paul Scarra and the Treasurer this morning. This is not liquidation. This is not ANSET. This is not the end of the airline. Rather, as the company itself has said in its statement, this is an opportunity to recapitalise and for Virgin to come out stronger on the other side of the coronavirus crisis. We'll come back leaner, stronger and fitter and play our role in making sure that the economy of Australia, which is currently devastated by the impact of COVID-19, recovers as quickly as it possibly can for all Australians. If you have purchased a flight through Virgin Australia or if you are part of the Velocity Frequent Flyer program or have a credit with the airline, those points, those credits and those flights are still being acknowledged. There is no change to the current structure or schedule moving forward. However, for points, there is a freeze at the moment. As for the workers, they're in a freeze as well, waiting to see what the company will look like and therefore if they'll have a job. I've been in this terminal for 25 and a half years. These people behind me, I don't my mates, they're my brothers and sisters. Sir, I, don't, I could not do your job and I don't envy you, but please let me do mine. Don't clip our wings. This will all move quickly from here. We're told of those more than 10 companies circling. They'll be finalised in the next three weeks. It'll take around three months, best case scenario, for a full takeover to take place. Five people have been arrested following a major pursuit on the Northern Ring Road, which came to an end at Thomastown, with 19 police vehicles surrounding a Mitsubishi SUV. Police had been monitoring a stolen vehicle in Meadow Heights when its driver dumped it and jumped into another car, sparking the pursuit. Three women and two men were taken into custody. Two police vehicles were damaged, but nobody was injured. And we'll have the latest from our reporter a bit later in the bulletin. In what the Prime Minister's described as the road back from coronavirus restrictions, IVF and low-risk elective surgery are set to resume from Monday. Here's Kerry Yaxley. Category 2 elective surgeries can go ahead after the Anzac Day long weekend and some other procedures, including IVF, will start up again, but gradually this is no fast-paced return to normal. We're talking about around a quarter of the usual number of elective surgeries resuming. These include post-cancer reconstruction procedures, some dental procedures, all surgeries for children under the age of 18, joint replacements, cataracts and eye procedures, uh, colonoscopies and end endoscopies uh, with all procedures to be reviewed on May 11. Uh, who gets their procedure done first will of course be decided on medical grounds. The Prime Minister says the National Cabinet made the decision to take this step because there are good signs with the number of infections remaining low and a larger stockpile of protective clothing. Post-cancer reconstruction procedures such as breast reconstruction, uh, dental and level two restrictions so such as fitting dentures, braces, non-high speed drilling and basic fillings. Uh, all procedures for children under the age of 18, uh, all joint replacements including knees, hips and shoulders, all cataracts and eye procedures, uh, all endoscopy and colonoscopy and all of these measures will be further subject to review on the 11th of May to determine if all surgeries 
and procedures can then recommence more broadly. The PM also sought to clarify the restrictions around aged care homes, reinforcing that residents shouldn't be forced to stay in their rooms in order to protect them. Common areas are more than OK. The restrictions are for visitors. Uh, two once per day for a short period of time in the residents' room. That is the norm unless there is an outbreak of coronavirus at the centre, of course. Victorian students won't be heading back to school early despite classes returning in New South Wales next month. Mark Santomartino joins us now with the details. Mark, the government is standing strong on at-home learning. Education Minister James Molino insists that remote and flexible learning is expected to continue for all of Term 2. Alicia, it might not be the news that many parents were hoping for, but unless the advice changes from Victoria's Chief Health Officer, that won't either. But pressure could mount after New South Wales announced a plan to phase face-to-face -face learning back in, despite having double the number of positive tests compared to Victoria. Children will be welcomed back to school once per week starting next month. Definitely from May 11, from week three of term two, students will start going back to school. Our advice remains the same. School, you know, if children uh, can learn at home, they must learn at home and that has not changed. Seven more patients have been diagnosed positive with COVID-19 in Victoria in the past 24 hours, bringing the state's total number to 1,336. If you're hoping for the shutdown to be scaled back soon, I wouldn't hold your breath. On Thursday, the Parliament is expected to pass an emergency omnibus bill changing a raft of laws to help cope with coronavirus over the next six months. That will include a ban on all evictions and a massive shake-up to criminal trials, allowing a judge to stand in for a jury, Alicia. We'll have all the details on that at six o'clock. OK, Mark, we look forward to it. Thank you. It seems there's a silver lining to staying at home with influenza infection rates significantly dropping across the country. So far, only 99 cases have been confirmed this month and doctors say that's thanks to social distancing. Stephanie Anderson has more. Well, outdoor clinics like this one here in Surrey Hills in Melbourne's east are popping up right across the country as GPs and health services think outside the square to protect their patients against the flu and keep them as safe as possible. Running for 45 minutes each day, this clinic ensures patients can access government-funded vaccines without stepping inside the medical clinic. Funny enough, there's more people usually sitting outside around the garden than there are uh, inside the clinic. It's a bit different to being inside. But uh, no, no, no problems at all. Probably better than going inside. Flu shots are in high demand, but official federal government figures show promising signs of an influenza slowdown, with only 99 cases confirmed across the country for April so far, compared to more than 7,000 in February, when a lot of the current lockdown rules were yet to come into play. Less people um, gather together in public spaces and also on public transport. And we believe a lot of that is reducing transmission. Last year, more than 313,000 cases of influenza were confirmed across the country, one of the worst seasons on record. Fears were high the statistics would soar again this year. But thanks to isolation and social distancing, experts say the current infection rate looks a lot more promising. We're seeing far less numbers of um, diagnosed influenza at this time of the year compared to any other year. The advice to Australians is that now is a good time to book in for your flu shot, but be mindful that stocks are being stretched across the country. The legal fight between Harry, Meghan and a British newspaper is intensifying with the release of text messages to her father, Thomas Markle. Correspondent Ben Avery has the details. Well, these are text messages provided to a court by Meghan Markle as part of legal action she's taking against a British tabloid newspaper. They're texts sent from Prince Harry to her father, Thomas Markle, in the lead-up to their wedding in 2018. Harry says, really need to speak to you. You do not need to apologise. We understand the circumstances, but going public will only make the situation worse. Any speaking to the press will backfire. Trust me, Tom, only we can help you as we have been trying from day one. Harry and Meghan are still at war with the tabloids at the moment. They've just written to four newspapers saying there'll be no more communication. There'll be zero corroboration and zero engagement. Those newspapers are The Sun, The Mirror, The Mail 
and the Express. Harry and Meghan do remain in California at the moment, a long way from here in the United Kingdom, where Prince Philip has just made a very rare statement in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. He has said, on behalf of those who remain safe and at home, I also wanted to thank all key workers who ensure the infrastructure of our life continues. The staff and volunteers working on food production and distribution, those keeping postal and delivery services going, and those ensuring the rubbish continues to be collected. Now, Prince Philip does remain in Windsor at the moment. He's there with the Queen. She's about to turn 94 years old, but as we know, there will be no official celebrations.